Our scripture reading this morning comes from Paul's letter to the Colossians, chapter 3, verses 12 through 17. Listen to the word of God. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has a grievance against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, on the church calendar today, it is Christ the King Sunday. Uh, And And so we have a lot going on today in in this rather jam-packed service. Uh, We have on on the church calendar, which is what dominates for us, of course, is Christ the King Sunday. We have uh, the dedication of Gracie Pearl, which is the reason why many of us are here. Uh, We have Thanksgiving, which we will uh, celebrate as a community here after uh, this service. But I'm going to focus my remarks on Christ the King and... But I'm going to bring Gracie Pearl into it here in just a little bit. On this day, we look forward to the coming fulfillment of the kingdom of God. But we are also reminded that we are part of God's kingdom now, and we are called to live like it. Now, that's where Paul comes in. Because Paul tells the Colossians and us how to live as God's chosen and holy people. How to live as subjects of the kingdom of God. How to live as if Jesus is our king. He says we are to clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, forgiveness, and love. Now, that's a lot of layers. That should keep us pretty warm. But, but this is not just an outside change. He says we are to let the message of Christ, the gospel, dwell in us. To let Christ rule in, that is, be the king of our hearts. That's really what the point, I think, of Christ the King Sunday is for us here and now. Christ the King Sunday, of course, has two points. We're looking forward to the coming of the kingdom, but we are also acknowledging that we are subjects of the kingdom here and now, and that we are to let Christ rule in us and rule among us and to live as his subjects. But how does that happen? I'm glad you asked. It happens through Bible study as individuals, families, and small groups as we're about to embark together as a church on a 52-week journey through the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts that will take us from the first Sunday of Advent, which is next Sunday, all the way through Christ the King in 2020. And... That's not as scary as it sounds, right? I have to preach 52 Sundays anyway, so it might as well be on Luke and Acts. 
Uh, and, I, and I can't do that alone. That's the reason why I've prepared a study guide for you, because I can't obviously cover all that material alone. You're going to have to help me with that. And so uh, if you worship here regularly, or if you'd like to worship here regularly, we'd, wel we'd welcome you to do that. Be sure to grab a, a study guide so you're prepared for next, next Sunday. The, the Christ dwells in our hearts. The message of Christ dwells in our hearts through preaching. We, we come and listen to a sermon. We listen to the word read. We listen to the word proclaimed. Christ dwells in our hearts through the sacraments and through the other rites of the church, which we're going to do here in a moment. And so we've, we've got seeing, or we've got hearing, and we've got um, tasting. And as Rick pointed out, as he showed the children, Gracie Pearl, um, that, that, that we, we are receiving the gospel. We are letting Christ dwell in us when we walk into this room and we begin to look at the stained glass. We begin to look at the symbolism that, that just visually Gracie Pearl gives us as we look at the sacred art that adorns this place of worship. And now to get to the point... Christ dwells in our hearts through music. As Paul says in Colossians, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, it sounds as if um, Paul is already experiencing different kinds of music in the church. Which, of course, brings us to Gracie Pearl and our great music program. And, and I'll say that, that, that I'll, I'll, I'll brag, I may be biased, but I would say that, that we, we have the best music program of any church in the Iowa Annual Conference. I'm going to go right out and say that. I would say we have the best music program of any church in the Iowa Annual Conference. And we have wonderful people, and I'm sorry if I offended somebody, um, uh, but the truth hurts. Um, <laughs> this is a wonderful church, and you, you don't understand. If you, if you came here to all of our worship services on a Sunday morning, and you experienced the breadth of the musical talent that God has placed in this church, and you've experienced all the ways in which people contribute to this ministry, um, the tornado has, has given us a wonderful opportunity that we never would have asked for, of course, but we wouldn't have gotten otherwise to have this magnificent instrument, but also to have this wonderful uh, remodeled sanctuary. This is a beautiful place to worship with symbolism all over that draws us deeper into God and lets God penetrate deeper into our hearts. But then we have all the bells and whistles and the technical stuff too. It's awesome. I tell my pastor friends who come to visit, I get to preach there every Sunday. And I count it as a great, great privilege. I am very proud in the best possible sense of the word to be the pastor of Wesley United Methodist Church in all of its varied ministries. But I need to say, while we're here, that worship does not equal music. It's possible to worship without music. It's possible to worship with all kinds of music, as Paul says. And it's most, and it's most certainly possible to have music that is not worshipful. Actually, I want to suggest to you that all music worships something. If you open your mouth to sing, you are worshiping something. Having said all that, there's something about music that gets down into the heart. That's why most of us are, as parents are very concerned about the kind of music our children listen to. Music, visual art does its job. Preaching and reading the word and sacraments do their job and they're awesome. Music, though, has a way of getting down into our hearts in a way that no other medium can. 
And so Gracie Pearl is here to help us proclaim the gospel in song. To help the word dwell in our hearts. To help us, as we have recently begun to say here at Wesley, to experience grace, to explore truth, and to express love. But of course, we don't need to have musical talent to bring glory to God. We don't need to have musical talent to bring glory to God. How do I know that? Because I don't have any. Rick's tried. He's tried. It just ain't there. So, so what do I mean? All of us can glorify God. Uh, Rick hinted at it just a little bit ago as he talked about unloading day and how we all participated in that and people from all over the community participated in that uh, people from other churches particularly the boy scouts were a big help on that day and so here's a picture of me here's a picture of me on organ organ unloading day you, you don't have that It's in the brochure. Second page. Second page. Bottom left corner. Yeah, there's a bear. You are. Everybody got. Everybody found the place. If you found it, say amen. All right. There's a picture of me carrying uh, furniture pads. The only thing that I'm qualified to do in connection with the organ. That's the extent. Of, of, my, of my knowledge or ability in this regard. But you see, another thing that Gracie Pearl has taught us, of the many things that she's taught us, Rick has talked about some, I've talked about some, but of all the many things she's taught us, is that we can bring glory to God in whatever we do.